Hello. Well, we're going to give our second tutorial a try. In fact, this morning I've already made three and none has turned out. <laughs> so I'm going to give it another try and I'm going to make it a little shorter this time, perhaps. Um, I want to continue with a uh, one that we started out with, number one with the key of C and I will play and go right down from the female from the male voice to the female voice and back up again and then I want you people to continue that and uh, learn the notes in that scale, the complete scale, okay? C, C, D, F, C, D, D, C, D, D, F, C, a, C, C, okay, C, you how to test to see if your mandolin is in tune. This is all by ear, okay? You go to the seventh fret and you put your, your trial to mandolin sound. Then you put your finger on the second string and you sound them with the fourth string. And if they sound the same, those strings are in tune. Do the same with the next one. It's in tune. Then with the fourth. And you know that it's in tune. That's it. You uh, are in a crowd and you don't have your special mandolin tuner. Uh, there are a lot of nice things out there that offers uh, very convenient, much, very much convenient, but it's important when you're learning your sound of your mandolin and the notes that you learn to recognize them when you hear them. Because when you're playing with a group, you will have to be using your ears if you're not using uh, music on, on uh, sheet. So, now, say if you have one string out of tune, say I'm going to put the D or the two, one of the D Doesn't sound in tune, does it? There's in tune. Not in tune, right? Now. Okay. Let's see if we can get it back in tune. Take it easy. Turn it slowly. Well, there was a few mistakes. 
sensation there. If you caught that, you're beginning to learn the sound of the notes of this piece and of the notes of the scale. If you didn't catch that, then you need more practice, of course, on learning how to recognize the sound. All right, did I do those mistakes deliberately? Well, yes. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, uh, another thing I'd like to mention is that it's never too late to learn to play music. Music is a expression that comes within you. Everyone has it. Uh, even though they say, I can't play a note, I can't sing a note, it's there. And amazingly enough, uh, if they try, it will come out. Perhaps not, not to be a, you know, a paying professional, but for their own enjoyment, which is very, very important. Music helps the health, helps your happiness, helps you relax, um, gives you great enjoyment, takes away the worries of the world, the pains of heartache. Um, <clears throat> you can even express yourself by writing songs and, and singing them along with accompanying yourself with whatever instrument that you have chosen to play. As you notice that a lot of people who play music are usually happy people. And uh, usually they don't have as many worries as uh, people who don't. Now, I come from a big family, and uh, most of us do or have played music. And uh, we did not have anyone to teach us. We had to teach ourselves by learning, like what you're doing with me here, by look, listening to others, by listening to... Uh, in my case, uh, music on the old, played on a, on a gramophone uh, while my parents had uh, their friends and neighbors over to enjoy an evening. I was very young at the time, just maybe two years old, but I had to go to bed, which was a very trying thing for me. But uh, it all entered my hearing and therefore into my being. And hearing and listening and learning by ear is just as important as learning uh, visually and the notes and uh, reading it and writing it. They all go together. So it's good to have both because that way you will progress faster and you will also find yourself um, having more opportunity, <coughs> pardon me, to um, find new pieces if, you know, or even compose and write music and publish it. So it, it has a lot of benefits in your life. Even whistling is music. Uh, I remember my dad used to whistle a lot. Uh, and uh, he played the fiddle a little bit, you know, and not much that I can remember. But I remember one thing. When I was very, very little, he, we lived in a farm, and the winter nights were very long and sometimes very cold and stormy. And so he would get the fiddle out and sit on the old kitchen couch and uh, put a chair on the side of it so I could stand on the chair. I was so small that I was just barely able to reach the fiddle while he played. And mother used to do a lot of knitting, and the knitting needles were metal in those days. So uh, he would give me two knitting needles, and he showed me how to accompany him with the knitting needles on the strings of the fiddle between his fingers and uh, and the bow. So I would do that for him and uh, that was one of my first exposures of music and I never forgot that. In fact, not very long ago on YouTube I saw it done by a youngster with uh, I think their dad or relative or whatever and I learned then that it was actually an occasion type of uh, accompanying the fiddle. So somewhere or somehow um, Dad must have come in contact with this type of, uh, of uh, playing the fiddle and have someone accompany him with these uh, metal uh, rods on the, on the strings. So my sister also, who is 94 years old, still plays music. She learned on the, on the uh, pedal uh, organ 
old-fashioned pedal organ where you had to provide your own air for it to make the sound. And uh, she, she, she became very good, uh, not a professional, but enjoyed it all her life and still does. And now she plays, of course, the modern um, keyboard, which is terrific at that age, and she enjoys it very much. So go ahead and have fun, and I hope that this helps you right here today a little bit. And do make comments, and don't be afraid to ask questions. And I will do my best to answer them or fulfill your request. And um, I look forward to hearing from you people who are following me on YouTube. Thank you very much, and bye-bye for now.